and welcome to thewholewheat.com. I'm Kathy Wheat. Thanks for joining me today. Today I've just gotten home from a long day at work, and of course I'm ready for dinner, but I didn't have anything already made. So, looking in the pantry and the refrigerator, I found that I had a piece of guanciale, which I think is how you say it, but I'm not sure. It's by a local company called Boccoloni. They do artisan meats, handmade salumis, all uh, made in the Oakland area. I joined a club that they have. is basically a CSA type of uh, formation where every other week I get to pick up a package of different types of salumi. So it's really great and everything I've had from them I've really enjoyed. So if you're local, I would definitely recommend you check it out. At any rate, this type of meat, it's actually a salt cured pork jowl, guanciale, is the original type of meat that was used to make spaghetti carbonara. So for the first time ever, I'm making spaghetti carbonara for Brad at home. I usually don't go in for the really hearty, creamy types of dishes like this. I'm much more into the vegetables and lighter types of styles, but when I joined Boccoloni, I knew I'd have to make some sacrifices, so let's give it a try. The first thing we're gonna do is to cut this into very small pieces, the pork jowl. Uh, we want about four ounces of that. You need two eggs, the fresher the better, and about a cup of uh, grated Parmesan. Also, you want some nice spaghetti or linguine, and you're gonna go ahead and get that boiling. So let me start getting things cut up and I'll show you how it looks. Here you can see the chopped guanciale. You can see that I have left it in fairly large chunks. Now I meant, to, I meant to say that if you don't have any guanciale, which most likely you won't because it's fairly hard to come by, you can certainly use a piece of pancetta or bacon in lieu of the guanciale. So the water is boiling and we're gonna go ahead and get this into a frying pan and we'll move on to the next step. Get your pan nice and hot. If you tap it like that, it should be very hot to the touch. If that worries you, you can always sprinkle a little bit of water in it, and if it sizzles, then the pan is hot. Then go ahead and add your guanciale, bacon, or pancetta, whatever you're going to be using, and let's start sauteing that. Into the pot of water, I'm going to go ahead and add all of my pasta as well. If you're not sure how long the pasta is going to take, you can add it later. I'm sauteing this guanciale over a medium-high heat. If it's too high, it's just going to burn and it won't cook through. And if it's too low, it's never going to sear and get this nice bit of brown to it that we want. So this will probably take about five to seven minutes. My pasta will cook in about the same amount of time. And then we'll put everything together. The next piece to the sauce is to take the Parmesan, which I've already grated, it's about one cup, and the two eggs, which I've started to scramble. We're gonna combine the two of them. When the pasta's cooked and hot and it's been drained from the water, we'll combine all of this together and it will give it that oozy, cheesy, egginess that makes carbonara what it is. So just combine them all very lightly. I often use a fork instead of a whisk, but you could also use a small whisk to do this. Once they're nicely combined, the sauce is basically ready. How much quicker and easier could that be? Chiale completely cooked. You can see it's got a really pretty nice browned quality to it. Some of them are fairly crispy, but if my mother was here, those are the only ones she would eat. You can see this was extremely greasy. You knew there was a lot of fat on the guanciale before I started to cook it. If you used pancetta or bacon, you may have less fat and that's completely fine. Don't feel like you need to add extra fat just to, just for the, for the sake of it. So my pasta is almost finished and when that's been drained, I'll show you how to put everything together. Finished, go ahead and drain it. Watch your glasses if you wear them. I used to wear glasses and I would always fog them up when I was straining pasta. My favorite thing to do with strained pasta is to put it right back into the hot pan because it'll help to get rid of the tiny bit of water that's remained on the pasta and keeps it nice and warm. So that when you add your sauce, which I've got right here, this is the egg and Parmesan mixture that we made, it'll start to melt right away. So get all of that egg and Parmesan goodness right into the dish. I'm gonna to start to mix it around a little bit. Next, add your guanciale or your bacon or pancetta or whatever you have and mix it all together. And now you have got to see this. This is just amazing how beautiful this turned out to be. Here's the carbonara completely finished. The only thing left to do is to top it with a really strong, healthy sprinkling of pepper and you're ready to eat. I hope you've enjoyed this edition of the wholewheat.com's video series and join me again soon. Have a great day.